Hi, this is an internet strategy tutorial showing you how to find the correct information the first time. How good are you at finding information on the internet? Do you know how to identify keywords for searching, such as rock and roll? Does that give you to music, or were you looking for bakery rolls, or a rock and roll tumbling gymnastics class? Are you looking at music? Are you looking at rocks rolling to be polished for making gemstones? There are many different ways that you need to fine tune your research to make sure you're getting the information you need. Have you heard of a Boolean operator? Using the words and, or, not, the plus sign or the minus sign? A what operator? Yeah, you heard me right the first time. A Boolean operator. And no, this is not Mrs. Boolean. A Boolean operator is something we're going to learn about and it is very useful and we actually use it every single day. It's what drives your Google or Bing or Ask search engines. When using a Boolean operator, it defines a relationship between the words or the group of words, and this can really help you narrow down a search or broaden it even wider. When using AND in between your two words, you only receive pages including both of those terms, not necessarily them right next to each other. So if you had rock and roll, and you put that in your search engine, and Google search and press go, um, you would get both of these terms, but it wouldn't be rock and roll as in music all the time. It is going to give you anything, any website that has the word rock and roll on it in any order. Now, if you're using or, or is going to give you um, a different search. You're going to be using and getting pages that either have one or the other. So you're going to get individual websites that have rock in them, you're going to have individual websites that have the words roll in them, or you may get even more rock and roll. So you're going to get rock or roll research. So this is going to have both of them. This is going to get either one. Now when using the not, you are going to um, get only one, not the other. So let's say you put in rock not roll. If you do that, it's going to weed out everything that has to do with rock and roll. So all music will be weeded out. It's just going to specifically have the word rock in it and it will X out everything that is roll. So let's say I asked you to research a topic online. Would you even know where to begin to start? Would you know where you'd want to pinpoint your research at? So right now, you're going to be learning the correct strategies to help you find information online. So let's learn the first thing you need to know before you go hunting for information. So you need to know the purpose of the hunt. It's the question you want answered. Sound familiar? Kind of like the first step of the scientific method. We're looking for the purpose. So here, Homer's interested in how he can make a donut car. Step one, the very first thing you want to do is define your purpose. Remember to keep it simple. Don't put too many words out there. Less is more in this search. The next step, or step two, is to find a reliable search engine. We are looking here at the word reliable. That means that you trust it. It is a trusted website. Some of my favorites are Google, Bing, Ask.com, Dogpile, and Yahoo. Those are all very good search engines. Now Kids Click actually searches out and looks for websites that are more kid friendly. So that is something that you may want to try. All right, so the big piece of this, the key, is the actual way we are searching. We are actually looking at the way we search. So this is a snapshot of a Google search engine. And um, most people, and I've seen you guys do it before, if I ask you, you know, where are there Starbucks in Chicago? What would you type in there? Right here in the search engine, you'd be putting 
where are Starbucks in Chicago? Instead of making that giant sentence, make it nice and simple. They put Starbucks, Chicago, nice and simple. Now when this is laid out, you're going to see this piece here. This piece here is going to give you local search results. So that's going to be maybe it's going to find a locator on your phone or a locator on your iPad or your device, your mobile device, and tell you what's within close here. It's 2.3 miles. Um, as you come off to the side, anything that's off on these sides are usually ads. So maybe if you're going shopping, you might want to click on those and it'll give you other ideas of where to go shopping. But when you actually truly want your or what they call an organic search, which is right here, this is where your search really starts. So we're looking at Starbucks in Chicago. And you always want to look, one of the first things you want to see is right here, you're going to look at the address. Is it an address that you would want to go to? It's got Starbucks everywhere in it, but is that really the Starbucks website? Is that what you're looking for? Here we've got, see this is going to take you to eBay right here. This one's going to take you to MapQuest for maps. So a big piece, here's another one, eBay Express. You really want to look at these web addresses at the bottom that will help you clue in to whether it's an area that you actually want to spend some time. Otherwise, you can weed it out and move on and look for more searches. The next piece to this puzzle is to identify keywords. Step three is to identify those keywords that will help narrow down your search so you're not going through 800 different websites to find just a few pieces of information. This is one of my favorite cartoons. I get a kick out of it. So these are showing what keywords are, and this is a perfect scenario here. This guy right here says his, his little sign says bite here. So where do you think people are going to be or fish are going to be biting if it's there? So he sits down, he goes fishing, and it says bite here. So they're all biting. That's exactly what it says here, right? Any fish, they're going to be biting what they want, and they're going to be going after that bait. So what he does is he looks and he figures out a way to fix it. Bite here, sardines, this is his key word. Getting the right key word is essential. Here's the key word, we've got a Sharpie marker. It's a marker, it's purple, it's a Sharpie, it's a pen. These are all a writing utensil. These are all words that will narrow down your search and help you. So what is our purpose? Well, today our purpose is to find out what ingredients will create a solution that blows giant bubbles. Look at that bad boy. That is a rockin' bubble. So our purpose, literally, for this whole entire bubble lab is to find what ingredients will create a solution that blows giant bubbles. That's a pretty big purpose. So let's see if we can keyword it down. I think the first thing in order to find how to get big bubbles is probably to do a search for a recipe. What do you think? So let's look for recipes for a bubble solution. Keyword here is bubble. You type in recipe and Lord knows what you're going to get. We're going to be making chicken Kievs and fruit pot pies. But um, if we look for bubbles, I think that that's a good keyword to start with. So here, this is um, a screen that I shot. I typed in the word bubble in my Google search. And I came up with um, bubble from Wikipedia. Stay away. Um, we've got, uh, let's see here. We've got imbd.com. Um, so that's a backdrop of decaying. Who knows what that is? Looks like it was a movie. Um, related searches, let's look over here. We've got Bubble Game, Guppies, Blaster, Struggle, Breaker, Tanks, Spinner, Shooter. Is that anything that's going to help us get a nice bubble recipe for giant bubbles? No, it's not. So let's key down our search even further. So let's see what else we can do. So here we're going to find the recipe for the bubble solution. So that's going to be our next keyword. All right, so here we go. I typed in bubble and recipe, so now I've narrowed that down. Not what is a good bubble recipe or the magic bubble recipe, <laughs> which I know you guys will do. 
Just make it short, sweet, and simple. Bubble recipe. The end. What do we got now? Homemade bubble solutions. Bubbles that don't pop. Chemistry. Ooh, I like that. Giant bubble recipe. Look at our related searches over here, guys. Giant bubble recipe. Perfect bubble recipe. Super bubble recipe. Ooh, secrets. That sounds interesting. Ooh, wait. <laughs> what is this thing? Corn syrup? Interesting. Well, wait. Corn starch? Kero syrup? Ooh, very, very interesting. Looks like something I may want to look into. So now we've narrowed it down even further. Okay, now we're going to start to use our little friend Boolean operator here um, with our words of and, or, or not. So what we're actually going to do first is you've got the word bubble and you've got the word recipe. We are now going to incorporate and in between our search engine. Now we've got on google.com the words bubble and recipe. So you have keyword right here, you have another keyword here, and then there is your directive. So we're using and. And what it's done is it's gone through all of the websites and looked for the word bubble, looked for the word recipe, and both of them are together. So for example, here you've got recipes for bubbles. Um, we have try this recipe, homemade bubble recipes. So it's helped you out, and here again we have all the different recipes with ingredients as related researches off to the size that would help us a lot. So as a reminder, you want a keyword and another keyword to fine tune your search. And then you want to use this Boolean operator keywords. We've got and, or, not. And what you do is you place them in between the two keywords. And then that will help you fine tune and save a lot of time on your research. So now we are going to review, do a review of the searching the internet with integrity. And I'm going to take you back through those steps. The first step is to define your purpose. Get your question or what you want answered. Step two, find a reliable search engine such as Google, Ask, Yahoo, or Bing. Step three, identify the keywords that you are looking for. So what we're basically doing is taking gigantic sentences that you want answered and breaking it down into individual words that will help you fine tune your research. The next step, step four, is to use those Boolean operator words to narrow your search results, such as and, not, or or. Step five is to review those results you've retrieved to answer your research question. So review over it again and look through it and find, with a fine tooth comb and pick out those, that information that you need. I hope this helped you to fine tune your search and help you get through the internet without wasting a lot of time and best of luck and happy searching.